Hello, this is Chuck Barlow, high school Sunday school teacher at Crossgates United Methodist Church in Brandon, Mississippi. This is Pandemic Sunday School Lesson Number 2. There's also an intro session, and I'd ask you once again, if you've never been in my class, you want to know a little bit about how we do things, go back and watch that short intro session. So this is Lesson 2. I'm going to make this, try to make this a shorter lesson. I'm trying to do this really in about 10 to 12 minute increments. We're going to try to do two lessons this week because they both lead up to Easter. Uh, we're, we want to talk today about the way Jesus used the Old Testament and the, or the Hebrew Scriptures and the importance of the Old Testament um, to, to Jesus. Now, remember, please, that these lessons are intended primarily for a high school audience. Anyone, obviously, is welcome to watch and, and, and hopefully learn and think but they are primarily intended for high school audiences who may not have thought about some of these things before. When we think about the, the Bible as a whole, if you grew up like I did, you know, you, you probably grew up for a long time thinking that the Bible was always like this, right? It was always one big book. Uh, anybody could kind of go grab it off a shelf if they wanted to, to read it. But if you think a little deeper, you realize that that wasn't the case. The book, there are, of course, 66 books in the Bible. They were authored by different people at different times, and then they were assembled over many, many years. That's a really interesting story and a, a story for another time. We have the Old Testament, which is um, probably more respectfully termed the Hebrew Scriptures because they are the Scriptures of, of the Jewish people, the, the Hebrew people. And then we have the New Testament, which, of course, begins with the Gospels, the stories of the life of Christ, and then moves on into uh, letters, epistles, and history books, um, and some prophecy about the new, the, the new church, the Christian church. So if I asked you this question, I said, well, okay, so we're Christians. We live on this side of the cross, if you're thinking about a timeline. Um, are you a are you a New Testament person or an Old Testament person? And I think I heard somebody. It was probably T Tim Zwier's uh, answer. Well, we're both. As Christians, it's easy for us to think of ourselves just as New Testament people and of our church as a New Testament church. Sure, it's a New Testament church because everything we do is centered around Christ. But Christ was deeply, deeply steeped in the Hebrew tradition that he was a part of. He was Jewish. He was a Hebrew. He grew up that way. He grew up learning their scriptures, um, learning what they believed about the character and will and grace of God. So it's really important to, to, to pay attention to how Jesus talks about things. And when he, when, he, when he talks about things in the New Testament, in the Gospels, when he acts, so many of his lessons, so many of his actions are founded, are grounded in Old Testament stories, in things that we go back and we see in the Hebrew Scriptures. So I'm going to ask you to read on your own and then come back. Uh, just pause the video and read... Luke chapter 14, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 30, okay? Luke 4, 14 through 30. So pause the video, go read that, and then come back to me. Okay, so if you've, if you've read this, you see um, that this is very early in Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry lasted about three years. Uh, from about the time that he was 30 to 33. And this is very early in his ministry. Uh, and, and you can see this really as the beginning point where he announced his ministry and he announced where he, why he was there and what he was doing. He's back in his home church, you might say. He was in the synagogue, the Jewish synagogue, there in Nazareth where he grew up. And as was the tradition there, uh, he someone is selected to read a um, 
uh, a selection from the books of the prophets of the Hebrew Scriptures, and he selected Isaiah. And so this is Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of, a, of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Now, obviously, that's a quote. He was reading from Isaiah. That's from Isaiah chapter 61. And if you go back and read Isaiah chapter 61, you'll get a really good flavor of, um, of, of what Jesus was saying and what he was talking about there. So he said, he, and then in verse 20, he says, I mean, the, Luke says, he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, I'm the one that Isaiah chapter 61 was talking about. So after this, it appears that the, the, the crowd had two reactions. The, the people there in the synagogue had two reactions. Some of them looked at Jesus and, um, and saw him as a teacher who was teaching with authority who was uh, giving them a, a wonderful new word, new teachings about God. Some of them obviously looked at him and said, isn't this guy just a carpenter, a son of a carpenter? He grew up here. What is he doing trying to tell us about God? Um, and they became angry because of that. Um, and so if you look at verse 24, well, let's start with verse 23. Jesus said to them, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard was done at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. So Jesus had performed some miracles, healing miracles in Capernaum. Um, and they're saying, you know, show us some tricks, Jesus. Do, do the same thing here for us. Continuing verse 24, he says, And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was shut up for three years and six months when a great famine came over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. Now, why were they mad? Well, they had looked at Jesus and said, hey, perform some miracles for us here the way you did in Capernaum. Uh, heal some of us. Show, I guess they were saying, show us that you think as much of us or that you can do as much for us as you did for the people in Capernaum. Kind of a, what have you done for me lately, Jesus, type of question. And Jesus responds to this by saying, you know, in the Hebrew Scriptures, um, in the books of First and Second Kings, there was a prophet, a mighty prophet named Elijah. And when God caused a drought to come over the land, he didn't send Elijah to go and help just the Hebrew people. As a matter of fact, he sent Elijah to help a widow who lived in an area that an area of that part of the world that was not filled up with Hebrews, and she was not a Hebrew. So Elijah, God's prophet of the time, was sent to help someone and to provide them actually with food through the drought. Uh, to help someone who, who was not one of you, who was not, not a Hebrew like us, not a Jew like us. And then a little after that, the next prophet is Elisha. And Elisha did many miraculous things during his life. One of them was that he cured a leper named Naaman. But Naaman was from a different country. He was from Aram. Uh, which you might think of as, as Syria. It's not quite that def, that defined. But anyway, he wasn't from Israel. He wasn't a Hebrew. But he was the leper 
that Elisha cured. So I just want to show you. You didn't think you were going to get too far along without seeing a timeline. So hoping you could you can see this. But very simple timeline of uh, the Old Testament, you know, starting with Adam and Eve, going through Abraham, Moses, David, David around 1000 BC. Of course, these are, you know, scholars are going to argue about these dates, but these are just kind of rounded off dates. And then after David, shortly after David, you have a divided kingdom, a northern kingdom called Israel, a southern kingdom called Judah. Uh, Elijah and Elisha were prophets to the northern kingdom, and you see they're around 850 years B.C., so uh, before the birth of Christ. And you have uh, you see that Isaiah is a little bit later, and he was a prophet in the southern kingdom around um, 742 uh, B.C. So this was a long time before Jesus. Uh, Jonah, who is also a prophet who Jesus talks about a good bit, saying that you will see no sign other than the sign of Jonah. Uh, you see that he was also a prophet to the northern kingdom around around 750. Um, so, and then, you know, I got the two little hash marks here because there's a long time here, and I wasn't obviously able to show everything on this little timeline. But just to give you an idea that Jesus is looking backwards here, uh, and he's looking back, you know, 700, 800 years to the stories of the prophets that make up such a big part of his education about God. And he uses those stories to tell the people of his time, look, I understand you think you're the people of God, and you are. I understand you think you're important to God, and you are. But don't think you're the only ones who are important to God. Uh, don't think you are the only children of God around here, because as a matter of fact, I was sent to preach to the poor, to preach to all kinds of people. That's what he read out of Isaiah. Uh, and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be like Elijah. I'm going to, he went to, a, to, to help a woman and her little boy who were starving in a drought, and they weren't even Hebrew people. I'm going to be like Elisha, who went to, uh, or who was able to help a leper, to cleanse a leper, um, who, you know, was not even from Israel. Uh, at the time was from Aram. So I'm here, I'm here to help everybody and I'm not here just for you. Um, in our Sunday school class, uh, we tend to call this version of Jesus Sassy Jesus, uh, which is a, 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 a term that uh, Megan Shepherd, one of my dear former students came up with uh, and not trying to be ugly, not trying to be sacrilegious, but you know what? Jesus could be sassy at times. And he was looking at the Jewish leaders here of the time. Jewish leaders who were trying to exclude others, even poorer Jews, right? From being part of, of the people who God gives grace to. And Jesus just looked at him and said, no, we're, you know, we're, we're not going to go that route. That is, that is not the character of God that you see in the Hebrew scriptures. It's not the character of God that was shown through Elijah or Elisha or Isaiah, and it's not the character of God that you're going to see in me. In me, you're going to see a character of God that is expansive, that is going to go to the poor, that it ends up are going to go to the Gentiles, all those people who, who aren't Jews, you know, as, as, especially through the work of Paul and some of the other apostles. So this is an interesting, really interesting way that Jesus used the Old Testament, but just look at what he did. He, he picked stories from the Old Testament, characters from the Old Testament, um, obviously meant a lot to him, and that, that provided great examples of the way he wanted to explain God. So I would tell you, if Jesus does that, and he paid that much attention to the Old Testament and the Hebrew Scriptures, what should we do, Right? Okay, that is uh, lesson two, and lesson three will follow short behind it, shortly behind it, and we'll talk a little bit about the blood of the lamb and how that ties in all the way from the stories of Moses to the stories of Easter. Thanks. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Talk to you again soon.